Hey guys and welcome back to the garden. Welcome to my channel if you're new here. My name is Blanca. So today's video you guys just want to do a quick garden update, a quick morning walk, show you what's going on here in the garden. Um, I want to talk to you guys about um, just some changes going on out here. Um, changes with my orchids. Uh, just you guys have lots of questions all the time since I mount my orchids like how long does it take for them to attach? Like what's the process? And I wanted to show you really quick. I'm gonna start off by showing you that and then I'm gonna walk around and show you what's new out here. <laughs> uh, so basically, let's see, I'm gonna walk over to this um, Vishamberkia, which is my MYC Grandiflora from, from Brethren. I got this one, I wanna say about two months ago at Ophi when Brethren was there. I got the Vishamberkia, it was, um, it was bare root and I attached it. So I just wanted to show you that she is already starting to grab on the palm tree. This is um, two months more or less after I attached it. So all orchids attach at a different pace. I wanna tell you fowls um, take around the same time. Um, cat layers take around the same, you know, take a little bit longer. Um, just anything that has thicker roots, in my opinion, attaches a little bit faster than like the dendrobiums that have like the really thin roots. So expect to have them um, start to grab on about two to three months after you've attached. Um, so, which is in my opinion, um, how long more or less it, it does take for them to grab. Um, so that's what it looks like. See, this is nice and secure in there already. Um, you can start removing uh, like the green wire or you can start removing um, the knee high uh, once you start seeing a little bit more roots attached because you don't want it to get so heavy where the roots um, will you know where the, where the plant will just pull the roof off the roof <laughs> pull the roots <laughs> well the plant will just um, be too heavy where um, it'll fall off because the roots are not um, strong enough to hold it yet so I would wait a little while longer I mean it doesn't bother me to see all this and you can always cover it with um with like the Spanish moss but wanted to give you guys an update on how fast um, they start attaching. And uh, like you see here, this is some green wire, which is actually really easy to bend. So you can you can just um, like bend it and, and, and tighten it and do all that while you're, while you're trying to attach it. So wanted to show you that for those of you that had questions. And I do get lots of questions. So I really wanted to address that and, and show you. Um, so that's, you know, very happy to see that. A lot of my Chamberkias around um, that I attached around that time are already starting to um, to hold to grab on to the um, to the bark. So that's exciting. Um, wanted to walk you over to my plumerias and start off my garden walk at that end of the garden, just so I can do like a thorough walk and show you guys um, what's going on and what I'm planning um, in the near future. So we're gonna start off here with my plumerias. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna show you my lychee tree, which is full of fruit. And she'll be ready to, um, I'll be ready to pick her soon. There's lots of lychees starting to ripen and I need to get to these before the birds do because you know, I don't have that many. They are almost ready for me to pick. I want to say by next week they should be ready. So yeah, my lychee tree is um is with fruit. Now it's it's crazy to me how it's only like on on this side, <laughs> like at the uh, like on the bottom over here, right there. They're not they haven't started or maybe they're not going to start um, blooming because these these trees are a little bit finicky. I want to say they give me fruit every other year, even though last year they gave me fruit, but the pattern before that has been every other year. In my garden, I have lychee, I have mango, and I have banana. So anyway, this is, um, you guys, this is my plumerias. The plumerias that I, that I, that I, I planted, I want to say about a year and a half ago, or was it? 2021 I can I'm so bad with dates I can never remember how long I've had these for I want to say um I want to say 2021 or was it 2020 I don't remember you guys but I think they've gotten so big and look at the flowers super super fragrant 
I mean, these even when, oh, sorry. Oh, I lost the flower. So these, even when they're really tiny there, they have flowers. So I wanna say I got some of these already in bloom, but they've grown a lot. They're in full sun. I got a total, I think I got a total of six. Four I put here and I have two um, dwarf ones around my pool because these get massive. So this is why I decided to put them over here on this side of the garden, this side of the yard. All right, now I have my staghorn. And then I wanted to ask you guys what you think about me just taking off all of these Schoenberkias and putting them, relocating them in a sunnier spot. So the, the minute I did that, I started to get blooms. And I'm thinking that having these attached to here is just, you know, they've been here for five years. I think it's a waste because they're not gonna bloom. They're gonna grow, but they're not gonna bloom. So if you guys think that I should leave them and just um, have them grow, kind of multiply around here and then remove them little by little, or should I just um, remove them now and just put them around the garden? What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section because I'm kind of debating, you know, should I take them off now and reattach them around my pool or around a palm tree that gets a lot of sun and then have them, you know, grow over there? Or should I leave them on the oak tree? Let me know. I kind of like them there, but if they're not gonna bloom or do anything, I might as well just move them, right? All right, over on this tree over here, I've got some cattleyas which are gonna bloom. So I've got some full sheets. I've got two little buds in here and then I've got a full sheath in this one from coming from this new growth. So these cattleyas here like the spot. Here they've given me flowers before, so I'm sure they're happy. And then the other dendrobiums are just growing. Let's see, let's see. My gumbo limbo has a few flowers. I've got flowers from, from this Oncidium. So this is an Oncidium, um, let's see. Pacific Waters Paw Pride with a Willis Picante. It's a pretty Oncidium. She's been in bloom for a while. And she is happy there. And then around, oh, just to this one. Spike on that. That's my, my Francine Rose something. It's Francine, Burr Francine Rose, Rose Glow. And then some, some Sherry Babies attached. And then my pineapple that I that I'm also need, I also need to harvest. Also, I also have pineapple. Hmm. That adds to the fruits growing in my garden. Um, yeah, so this pineapple is almost ready, and then I've got, I guess, two more little two little pineapples growing underneath. That's never happened before, and that's so pretty. I promise you guys, these pineapples are so small, and probably like one person can eat the entire pineapple. Um, but I do it not only for the fruit, but I love the way they grow. Like, I love to see them in bloom like this. In bloom. Is that what you call it? I don't know. I love to see it like, I love to see the pineapples growing like this one. I had them around my pool and I had to relocate them because these get so long that they were um, kind of in the way. But I love the way the pineapples look when they're, when they're growing like that. So anyway, let's keep walking. Jasmine vine trellis, or I don't know what you call this. It's on a trellis, but it's my jasmine vine. Smells amazing. Mm. It's in bloom and everything is fragrant around here because it just, this smells so strong. I love it. This Oncidium is still in bloom. It's been in bloom, I want to say, for a little bit over a month. And then I've got another flower spike. And if you're interested in the name, I will show you the name that I have it attached. It's a really, really long name. So I, it ends in white snow. <laughs> that's, that's all. That's as much as I can, as I can read as that huge Oncidium 
Cafalangi white snow. It's got another another flower spike. And then my 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 sweet sugar oncidium right over here. So they're all doing amazing. All right, I also want to tell you guys on Saturday, this Saturday I'm going to be popping up at a Heavenly Garden, which is um, my go-to orchid store for fowls. So I'll be replacing all of my indoor fowls this weekend when I go there. So if you guys want a video when I'm there, I can um, always do that. They have pretty fowls. It's a store um, where they have, they specialize in fowls, beautiful fowls of all different sizes and colors. And, um, and then they also bring in some other, you know, exotics, which is what they call it. Um, and they'll have different, um, different orchids on display. So if I see anything cool, I will, I will show you guys a video of that. All right, my orchid section. So my orchid section, I want to tell you that I am very happy with the fact that my Hoyas are doing so well. They're doing exactly what I wanted them to do when I, when I had the idea to, um, to hang my, to hang my Hoyas and have them all bloom when I look up. I mean, they're doing so good and they're constantly blooming now. There's one padunco, which is gonna, um, gonna bloom soon and another padunco right here. And then another padunco right there. And I think the more, um, the more, the more they grow, I mean, they're just vining all around. I can't even, the camera can't, doesn't even do it justice because you can't, it's so thin. But the vines are starting to um, just crawl. You see that? And, and hopefully in a few years, which is happening really quick, they'll start just taking over all the wires on top. So let's see, last time I was here, it was to show you my haul, which everything in bloom here, mostly is from my haul, my white seed infinitia. Um, but then I do have some, some, um, some bandas and spike. This is, uh, let's see, which this is, this is this one. This one's from Pro Smith. This is a Vanda Denisoniana with Mimi Palmer which is in bud i know that my golden doubloon i saw it in bud too this is a pretty one also which is going to start opening soon so i have about five or six vandas that are starting to spike which is good news and then you guys asked me about my sherry babies and pots this is this is one of them this is um a sherry baby that i keep in pot because you know, I, I have them on my trees and then the ones that I have in pots also do amazing. This is this has a spike. And this one, I just keep it inside the sphagnum. This is a spike on that one. So that one's spiking. And I wanted to show you, tell you guys that my catacetums are starting to spike. So I've got about four catacetums in spike. So I can't wait to show you um, the flowers for those. It's um. It's, this is a time when the catacetums start to um, to wake up from their dormancy, even though mine pretty much never go um, never go into dormancy. Not that they're spiking, but I still give them water. Mm, I've got two flowers left on my chilichista. And then the one that I've been growing for a year has not opened yet, but it's gonna open soon. And then there's this beautiful Dendrobium over here. I'm gonna walk over there in just a second. Um, so yeah, so one of the biggest updates is that my catacetums are spiking. Now this is the other grammatophyllum that I keep under here, not under full sun, and she still managed to um to also bloom. And these blooms are a little bit different. This is a different variety. I don't have the tag for sure. This one came from Redlands years ago, four or five years ago. Um, because the ones that I have around my pool is the uh, Grammatophyllum scriptum, and and this has a this one has a different name, but there's a different variety, which I keep here, and right in between um, the palms. Sometimes I don't know where to put my my orchids, so these I put here um, just because they were big and and they're doing good. All right, so last video, I showed you my Serena O'Neill. 
now she's in in bloom but yeah she must have gotten a little bit of thrips the damage because she's not looking as pretty as she normally does oh but she let me tell you as not pretty as she looks because she i could tell that you know she's more she's usually more vibrant usually the the green is a lot more vibrant and so is the purple this is a beautiful beautiful orchid it's called the epi serena o'neill that's her tag um, but she was hanging in my gumbo limbo and then I found her on the floor and um, when I picked her up I noticed that she did have some 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 flower spikes so I brought her over and you see the spikes are damaged and I think that's thrips thrips either thrips got her or she was like on the floor for a really long time and then she got a little bit damaged but she's still fragrant and she's still pretty Oh, she's super fragrant. I love, love this orchid, you guys. Epi Serena O'Neill. Very, very fragrant. All right, and then this one here I showed last video also, but I really didn't talk too much about her. So this is an Encyclia Cordigera with a Cattleya Aclandiae. And if you guys saw the Cattleya Aclandiaes that they had at Crow Smith, they're oh, gorgeous. So this one is is a is a is a hybrid between that Cattleya clandiae and an Encyclia cordigera and then you get this color combo which is like the purple and this throat it's like a lighter a lighter pink so you see why i have to touch them because you see how it's facing down and i want to just touch them <laughs> so i can i can bring her up so you guys can see her and i hope the wind is not being annoying because it's it's really windy today you guys are not getting that wind in the microphone let's see i cover a little bit so this is the pretty the pretty bloom on this one there you go that's a better that's a better picture and you see she's kind of facing down so i want to just bring her up a little bit so you guys can see her just absolutely beautiful and hmm, she's I can I can see she, I can I can tell she has a little bit of fragrance. She's probably probably hasn't come in yet. But um, both both of the parents are super fragrant, so she should be very fragrant as well. So that is her. And then when I got her, I got her in this um, in this little basket, which is if I see anything pretty that's mounted, you know that it's coming home with me because this is my new um, my new thing now. Anything that's mounted is what I want to buy. You know, I can mount them myself and I am going to mount them. Oh, and we've got a pollinator. Um, and and I do want to mount them. Look at how this bee is pollinating. <laughs> I want it to be, I don't want it to be so windy that the bee falls on me, but look at that, a little pom-pom. So what I was saying that if you're mounted and you're pretty, you're coming home with me for sure. Um, and I am planning to do like a mounting, um, a mounting party with my friends, you know who they are. And, um, and we're going to plan that and that's going to be a fun video. So if you guys want to want to, um, want to see us mounting, stay tuned for that. Cause that's happening soon. I got a ton of mounts from the orchid supply store. Um, and we're going to do a mounting party. I'm going to host a mounting party. <laughs> All right, so we've been looking at this bee, trying to get in this um, in this orchid, and it's gone now. But these are the beautiful pom poms um, from my dendrobium bullianianum. So this one came from Smiley, and she was in bloom a few months ago, and and she's still shooting out these adorable pom poms. So cute tiny little flowers in there that are just gorgeous. I love them. There's the bee again. All right, and then my dendrobium denisoflorum is still looking amazing. So I wanted to tell you, um, since I couldn't really get into it last, last video because I was just chatting too much before my, before my haul, is that this one gets fertilized every week with a 20-20-20 fertilizer, which is what I use now. Um, I had switched it up, but then I, I went back to my 20-20-20. I 
um 20 20 20 a little bit of seaweed kelp a little bit of epsom salt on a weekly basis and a bloom booster once a month um, is what i fertilize with and she's basically in what's left over of the sphagnum but she's almost all bare root in here and what gets water she gets water um when all my other orchids get watered which is probably once a day um these sprinklers will hit her and she's happy i mean very happy she is just absolutely gorgeous and still looking pretty so that's that's it for this one and i can i can foresee that i'm gonna have more of these in the future because i just think that she's absolutely gorgeous all right well we see a palm frong right over here disturbing my orchids and and this is where i keep all of my most of my hoyas and they're just finding everywhere In the last video i did show you that this hoya had some flowers Super pretty. And that's the name of it here. This one's from Rip and Swiffer. Now you see these palm fronds. When they fall, they hit anything in their path. And it's just a nightmare. All right, my um, Sideria japonica is still in bloom. Fading out slowly. pretty and that's it you guys i think that this is my morning my morning walk yeah and then this one it's unfortunate that my um my shilleriana so my shilleriana with transportation didn't open which you know, it's fine, a little disappointing when you get home and your flowers die, but um, I still have a beautiful established Cattleya on a mount. You guys asked lots of questions about the Shilleriana. Um, it's beautiful, I love it, but if you get it in flower, I wish I would have gotten the ones that were already opened up. I got the ones that were still like kind of like budding. And with the transportation, the AC of the car, moving back and forth from their greenhouse to my car, to my to my environment they just didn't did it didn't do well so shilleriana is the flowers are all withered but it's fine because i'm going to start fertilizing watering and hopefully before the end of the year i will have um i'll have new flowers to share with you guys but super super happy with that with that purchase and what else is going on here in the garden new blooms on my vandas or new flower spikes on my vandas i'm getting ready to start acclimating um these two shamburkias um they've been out here of course you know i want to acclimate them a little bit before i mount them because now they're going to be mounted in the direct direct sun so i don't want to fry them so every week i'm going to move them a little bit closer to the sun until they are ready for mounting and of course i will come out here and share with you guys when i decide to mount them and where i put them because those are three beautiful um, Shamburkias Tibianas. Shamburkia Tibianas. And can't wait to mount those. And the other ones that I have around my oak tree. And the other ones. I'm going to be taking a trip over to, um, to Ofi soon. To also um, mount um, the cuttings that I got from, from Karen. And I think... Flower spike on this panda. Yeah. And there's another flower spike on this panda. This one I saw. This is my golden doubloon. Alright, so my vandas are, are starting to spike little by little. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna go and take um those those cuttings over to Ophi and we're gonna do a full mounting um just to show you how we're gonna mount them. So I can't wait for that. I think I'm going to go over there tomorrow to do that. And if I do, I'll just uh, upload another video tomorrow. And this is my Seed Infinity Amiltrata Pink. 
that's in blue. And then wanted to also show you this one. Um, so this one here, I mounted, this is a Catlea, like a little Catlea from Brethren. I mounted it at the same time that I mounted the Schamberkia um, on, my, on my palm, because I got them both at the same show. And look at already how the roots are starting to attach. So that's been um, also about two months. And that's already attached, so that's good. You know, lots of new growths here. These are some beautiful flowers from this one. It's fragrant. Lots of new growths, lots of growing in the garden, which makes me very happy. And and all the new blooms. There you go, that's a tag. Paraphidenia, Girac Coge Crown Fox. And these are the flowers. Fragrant, beautiful. And then these are the leaves. So for some reason, I'm starting to gravitate. You know, I go through phases. I guess this is my phase now where I love all these like um, side and fideria, like these, these type of orchids, you know, that have those long, those long leaves. I first got introduced to these type of orchids. See, when you're new to orchids and you see different things that you don't even know existed, you're like, what? So um, I don't know if you guys were here. Um, some of you guys maybe um, would um, follow my channel when I used to do the unboxings. Um, and one of the unboxings, well, I still do unboxings. It's just I haven't gotten a box in a while. But um, except for like the Orchid Supply Store that sent me a box recently. Uh, but years ago, I want to say like two or three years ago, um, Sheldon from Carmela sent me a box that had a really long um orchid that was like a rope and i was like oh what is this what is this rope thing and you know the rope thing ended up being something as pretty as as this orchid here so i would have never guessed that i was gonna like these type of orchids so much because back then i was like into just the pretty flowers which i still am but i was like um no idea that these these type of orchids even existed so for you guys that are beginners i mean i'm still a beginner um i've been into orchids for about five years um but and i think that's still kind of like the beginning i'm still at the beginning um for you guys that, that send me messages like oh my gosh i'm a beginner and i just found your channel and all that you are going to be introduced in the next few years to like the most amazing orchids and you will see how much you start like learning and growing and wanting to connect different different orchids that's what happened to me you know you start with a fowl and you just kind of like start discovering all of these all of these different orchids and when i started my friends weren't into it i really didn't know anybody that was into it um i would just kind of go to the orchid nurseries and just ask questions and look around and just see pretty flowers and and get information like that now it's like there's so many people in the orchid world that that i know because of my channel that you know you guys tell me about different orchids that i've never heard about before but before five years ago it was just kind of like me and my pretty flowers in my garden <laughs> so it's funny how you know you just start start learning so much and discovering so much and especially now that um there's so many different youtube channels that talk about all different orchids uh that it's going to be easier for you than it was for me at the beginning so you know enjoy the journey it's it's beautiful and every day believe it or not whether you're a beginner or an expert i'm sure that even the experts they find out new stuff every day so anyway this has been a chatty one 28 minutes <laughs> of chatty chatty so just wanted to uh remind you guys this weekend on saturday i'll be at a heavenly garden and make plans for may because tammy Ami is coming to town <laughs> well they are from town but their show is um finally happening Hopefully all this COVID uh, is behind us and we can have a nice show, a nice, beautiful, uninterrupted show because the one in January got interrupted because of Omicron. But now hopefully the May one um, will be the best one yet. So I hope to see you guys over there. I will have more information about, um, uh, I guess, tickets. Uh, I know it starts at 11 and it starts uh thursday is a preview day which uh, like wine and cheese and preview if you want to get tickets for that and then friday saturday sunday it's open to the public from 11 to 6 but if you get early bird you can go in at 9. so you're hearing it from here <laughs> if you guys want to get there early and get your hands on some amazing orchids get in there early remember what happened um, to some customers at Cruel Smith, they were there on Saturday and they were left 
pretty much empty handed because everybody goes in really early um you know to buy which unless you see something okay let's make a deal unless you see something in my video at the preview when i do the preview for you guys if you guys message me but you guys need to get my attention like if you guys message me right away once i post that video that you like something maybe i can speak to the grower if you're planning on going or maybe i can speak to a grower that i showcase that can ship to you or we'll be in touch like that so if you find something that you love 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 on preview day um send me a message if you have my instagram you can also message me through there orchid lover 15 or even my scented my scented diva instagram i'll probably see that sooner so if you like something message me via my scented diva account scented diva candles on instagram and maybe i can talk to the grower and have them separated for you we'll make that deal to my viewers to my viewers that if you guys like something on preview day and you think you're gonna go visit them on Saturday or you maybe you want it shipped, send me a message and I will do my best to put it aside for you. Deal? Deal. <laughs> All right, you guys, enough of me chatting. Have a wonderful day. Um, gonna be, like I said, at the Heavenly Garden on Saturday. I'm gonna probably go to Ophi tomorrow. So stay tuned for lots of videos coming up because once we get closer to Mother's Day, I'm probably gonna be a little bit quiet because I, you know, I, I, I'm already starting to get really, really busy. So that's it. Um, shutting up gonna start getting ready to go to work i will see you guys soon in my next video and thank you for watching bye bye